Oh, it's a flashback. It's an Ishbalan child. One left dead with nowhere to call home. Let's go. The war is over now. You can't walk away from this one. The fighting, maybe. But the nightmares of what we did in this place are far from over. I believed in you. Whoa. I trusted you with my that hurts. research. Damn, how do you feel if you're Roy right now? Please burn this off. Deface my back. There can be no more flame alchemists. Yeah, but there's always going to be war. Set me free from his alchemy. I'm begging you. Wow, that was intense. What she's asking for seems mostly symbolic. You know, like she's suffering. It's like the brief flashback we saw of her father when he wanted to put an end to flame alchemy. Or he didn't want Roy to use it for the war. But it won't really change anything. I mean, my feeling about it is still the same as back then. And also, you know, like with Zhang Zhang and Avatar. It's just a tool. The wrongs they did are not really about the flame alchemy. So for me, it seems like she's seeking some kind of punishment. Or she's just seeking anything that will give her a symbol of rejecting what she's done. That scene hurts me not so much for Riza. Although it's sad. But for Roy, because that's such a terrible weight on his shoulders, the fact that she did trust him. I mean, a lot of people continue to trust him. And it seems like from the last episode, we're really exploring Roy now. And we're exploring that he does have a lot of darkness. And there's a question of, like, what's truly in his heart, you know? And I'm asking myself, why now? Why are we seeing this flashback now in the middle of this whole drama with Roy and Envy? And I think it's probably connected to the danger, like the danger of his flames, how it might engulf him. You know what I mean? That's the risk that Ed seemed to sense in the last episode. Episode 54, Beyond the Inferno. Yeah, this massive cliffhanger. What are you doing, Lieutenant? Do you know who your gun's pointed at? <laughs> who? Don't make me laugh. When it's just us, the Colonel calls me by my first name, Riza. <laughs> Whoa! That, that totally got you? me. I lied. <laughs> but it was still very nice of you to fall for it, Envy. I got triple faked. Damn it, Envy. First I thought that Roy was going to shoot Riza thinking it was Envy. Then I thought Envy was disguised as Riza about to shoot Roy, and none of those were correct. My losing streak with Envy continues. Am I ever gonna get my shot? Probably not. This was like the last boss of Envy fake outs, and I, I lost. Her bullets just have extra impact. I'll dump you at his feet like a rat! There he is. Envy probably can't take too much more of this. Roy toasted him up pretty good last episode. What in the hell are you doing to my lieutenant? Wow, Envy actually looks scared. I mean, for good reason. <sighs> Dramatic staring intensifies. And continues. You the staring grunts. Don't you Yeah, and this is her father's flame alchemy. This looks like the end. Damn it. This again. So this is your true form then. You're ugly. Oh, that's the worst thing you can say. Please don't. This is so pathetic. A jealousy. Is an ugly thing. I'm not giving you a choice. Now burn in hell. What the hell? Put your hand down. Damn it! I won't ask again. <sighs> yeah, he's losing it a little bit. I'm surprised that she actually pointed a gun at him, though. Give it to me right now. No, I won't. He's a little bit over the edge, and this is exactly what they're worried about. Give him to me, or I'll burn up your hand along with him! Try it then! If it's a fight you want, fine! But first, maybe you should take a good look at your face! Is that the face you plan to wear when you're leading this country? Well, is it? Is that what you want to be, Colonel? Another monster? And then, in turn... They'll protect the ones they love. It seems like the least we tiny humans can do for each other. You've got my support, but you could have just asked me. It ought to be fun to watch, though, and maybe it might even do some good. 
Are you becoming a beast? Giving into its passion? Wow, hearing this from Scar is insane. I won't stop you from giving in to revenge. Hey! What right do I have to stop someone from taking vengeance? But still, I shudder to think what kind of world a man held captive by his own hate would create once he becomes its ruler. <laughs> wow. Out of all the people trying to talk him out of it, I feel like Scar is the most effective there. At least in terms of my own emotions, because Scar has more reason than anybody to be vengeful, and that vengeance would be directed at Roy Mustang and Riza. So hearing that for him, you just gotta have perspective. It just forces you to think differently. This is pure hatred, and I will not let it take you. You're better. I know you're better than that. <laughs> yeah, she's had faith in him all this time, too. Oh, Hughes. Yeah, I mean, it's perfectly understandable. I also kind of want revenge, you know? If you're going to shoot me, shoot me. But then, after you've done that, Lieutenant, what will you do? I can tell you I have no intention of carrying on by myself. This fight will be my last. Once all of this is over, I'm going to end my life and remove my secrets oh. of flame alchemy from the world. I can't afford to lose you. What kind of madness is this? Scolded by a child. <laughs> lectured by a man who has been my enemy. And you. I've done it again. I've hurt you. That's because they care, though. They're good How people. How foolish can one man be? It's all right. Please forgive me. Wow. What a powerful scene. There's just so much going on. Like, I totally feel the pain of Hugh's death and the fact that Envy is just terrible. And I wouldn't have lost any sleep if Roy had just, like, smushed him. But this brought a lot of things up to the surface. And these people are placing a lot of faith in Roy. So many people are placing faith in Roy. Like I've said a bunch of times, it's not so clear that Roy coming into power will be a great thing. It just depends on who he is and who he shows up as. And so if he has this kind of darkness, or if he forgets his ideals or forgets that he's doing this for other people, like in his speech, you know, like, you protect the ones around you, etc. Then it seems like almost a guarantee that he will become the very thing he's fighting. I think it took a lot of courage for all three of the people there talking him down. And I think that actually is, speaking of like taking care of others, that was rough, but credit to them for actually holding their ground and caring enough, you know? They could have just not cared. What made Ed turn back and go after Roy? What made Riza, the person who probably loves Roy more than anyone, point a gun at his head at great personal and emotional risk to herself. I think that's a testament to how much they actually do care about him and how much they respect him. And I think that's sort of a humiliating moment for Roy, but it's also a wonderful moment because to be that lucky where people actually, one, care about you that much, and two, are strong enough to actually be that when you need it, you know? One thing I'm also thinking about watching this scene is that Roy is a human being. The amount of strain and pressure he's been under during the course of the show would break just about anybody. So it's perfectly reasonable for him to have a kind of collapse, like an emotional collapse. I think there's something like an equivalent exchange like this in real life as it pertains to our personalities. You know, like I sometimes think that in life you can't get away with anything. You can't get away with any negative action or you can't get away with any kind of perpetual strain. If there's something impure about who you are or what you're doing, you're always gonna pay the price eventually. And Roy, as strong and capable and intelligent as he is, he has some core beliefs that seem in some way to lack a total perspective. It feels less robust and wholesome than many of the characters in the show. There's a rage there. There's something impure there that's driving him. And I think that's sort of what this episode is bringing out. Are you a moron? <laughs> nice flowery words. Come on, MB. Give it a break. Have you forgotten? Your pal Scar here was going to kill you. And what's more, wasn't he the one that killed the parents of the Pipsqueak's girly friend? They're so over it. It's just pitiful. And then and he's going off. <laughs> she shot your buddy left and right. You'll never get another chance. This is the perfect time. <laughs> the opportunity. Hate and weep. Oh, Jared this is so bizarre. Fight each other. You're all in the dirt. He's losing How it. Did you for hoop to team up? You're way beyond the point of kissing and making up. Right, Pip Squeak? Right, Hawkeye? Mustang? Scar? They're just better than you. I see. 
We all see it. You're jealous. You're jealous of humans, aren't you? We humans, according to you, were supposed to be nothing when compared to homunculi. And yet, when we're beaten down, when we stray and fall, we face the challenge again and again. Our loved ones are always there to pick us back up. And you're jealous. You envy us because of that. Yeah, Ed really nailed it. Envy looking really pitiful here, like a little child. This is how it goes, right? Like, I've noticed that about myself. I've noticed that if there's something that I really hate, and I'm talking about, like, intense emotion, not just, like, average dislike, it's probably based on either a desire that I have or a lie I'm telling myself. For example, if I think of myself as a certain kind of person and I'm attached to that idea, but something comes along and exposes that I'm not thinking about it accurately or I'm not actually being the good thing that I, I think I am, once that's uncovered or once there's any kind of behavior or action or thing that casts the light on my own shadows, that thing is a threat. And it's way harder to look at that lie and sort of uncover yourself and see what's in your own heart and maybe be challenged by that and actually have to work to change yourself or something like that than it is to just tear the other thing down. And a lot of the times when we hate, especially when it's directed at people, it's because we recognize virtues in those people that we want for ourselves but will not admit to ourselves that we need because it's challenging, it's too difficult. It's way easier to tear those people down. I feel like there's always going to be a connection to something wrong internally, like not about the other thing. There's a clue there. And similarly, and on the flip side of that, I think identifying that phenomenon in others sort of melts away the danger. Like when you can see that hatred or anything like that directed at you is actually just something that that person is dealing with or has to deal with, it becomes so simple and transparent and it becomes non-threatening. So that's the feeling I get from the scene when they're looking at Envy and Envy saying all these horrible things, but it clicks for Ed that Envy is the weak one, not humanity. And it's probably Envy's own perceived weakness that spawns that kind of hatred towards humanity. Like Envy knows that he's not capable of those things. So there's nothing to fear from him in terms of what he's saying. And I love that his physical form matches that so well, this little green slimy worm. <laughs> I shouldn't be surprised. That's just how all you humans are. This time around, I'll go with a younger, cuter model. What do you say? You humans don't make any sense to me. Is this Envy reflecting? Hold on a second! Idiot, where are you going? Now! <laughs> Whoops. Wait. He won't last long. Oh. Humiliating. Yeah. Ending up so pathetic like this. Another poetic death. Trampled on by humans. Literally. Those lows of beans. We useless people. <laughs> Not much actual reflection going on here. I've been humiliated. Humiliated. Me? Envy? Jealous of you? Of you humans? He's just digging deeper. <laughs> At least some honesty. Yeah, and it just keeps going. <laughs> the humiliation continues. Is this suicide? Whoa. Well, there goes Envy, Goodbye. misanthropic till the end. Right. It's even more poetic that Envy's Envy the easy way out and killed, himself. killed himself, yeah. Cowardly bastard. I don't regret that happening, but it feels significant. It's always a bizarre feeling for me when the homunculi die because I don't like them. Envy was sort of the worst of them in a lot of ways, especially with the death of Hughes. But I can't help but feel just a tinge of sadness each time just because it's sad. Like, it's sad that that was his existence. I do pity Envy, which is great. <laughs> what better feeling to have when, you know, Envy dies than pity. But yeah, for Envy, it's a tragic story because that was just his whole existence from start to finish. You know, I thought maybe for a second there, there was going to be some reflection, but the reflection was more just realizing that Ed was right, but without any possibility for change. So yeah, officially saying goodbye to Envy. Crazy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sloth chewing on this rock. His wounds are healing. I remember my first homunculus. We're under orders to kill General Armstrong. General! Major! Look, you got bigger problems. Just in time. 
From this point on, I'll be running the show. Just listen to her. Oh, no. <laughs> awesome. One swing. Shoot him in the head, damn it. <laughs> Bullets have no effect on them. Yeah. Go for their upper jaws. If we can get rid of those, at least we won't be eaten. That's smart. Yeah, because they don't heal, right? They just don't die. I remember. I killed a woman general. Armstrong's putting up a hell of a fight, male Armstrong, considering his dislocated shoulder and the fact that he's fighting a homunculus. Is that the same shoulder? This yeah. So much easier if I could use both arms. <laughs> yeah. This hurts me inside. Leave him! That's my brother! He's trained better than to be killed like this! At least she has faith in him. This is it! It's the end! Uh oh, the eye twinkle. It's over for you now. Eye twinkles intensify. <laughs> Damn, he's just overflowing with sparkles. That's how you know he's powerful. My shoulder is back! Oh, he used Sloth's hit to pop his shoulder back in? Love this music. <laughs> Glorious Armstrong punching music. Armstrong is going to be the first character to punch a homunculus to death. My incredible strength and the art of my alchemy work beautifully together. You'll they do. Find the two to be an uncomfortable combination. There you go. Return fire! But the civilians haven't left yet, sir. And if we wait, we're guaranteed to lose the main gate. Get a move on. Why is this so much better at optics than these guys? Who in that? When people ask, I say I'm a housewife. It does make sense. <laughs> Still in her bathroom slippers. I am an alchemist! Hell yeah. Love you, Izumi. <laughs> oh, it's a special ending scene. Wow. Just walked right in. Long time to see. To me, you're still a dwarf in a flask. Homunculus. And you're still slave number 23, aren't you? You gave me part of your body. Today, all these many years later, you will become a part of mine. Awesome. That's a great scene. Hohenheim's so unassuming, but I love his trash talking. <laughs> Hohenheim's good at cutting deep, but that's weird because that suggests that the battle between them will start without anyone else. I mean, when you think about it, this has really been the, the conflict the whole time, right? Like, that's where it started. It starts with Hohenheim and Father. So their battle is inevitable, but everyone else is going to show up, probably. So yeah, that was obviously a very intense episode. I felt all sorts of things. I think the whole Roy conflict is interesting. This whole operation and the life he's been living has got to have taken a huge toll on him. Probably even before the events of the series, you know, like, even starting with the Ishval and War, he's still carrying all that and it's gonna show i don't think anybody can hold it in like that you know without having some kind of issues or problems or cracks but it speaks directly to his philosophy about people helping each other in times of need right so on some level he does have core beliefs that actually are good and pure and that seems to have saved them so that's a really great choice for roy i think and then the whole envy thing is painful i love envy's death i think it was done really perfectly i love that his death came at the hands of roy having that realization and the four of them rising above what Envy expected of them. But the whole thing just left me feeling sad. Like I said, as terrible a person as he was, I got to know him. There were some things that were very lifelike about his character and very relatable to his character. In fact, I think Envy is maybe one of the most relatable sins for me in the homunculi. In terms of the darkness of it, gluttony, I can see the problem, but it's not as much of like an existential threat for me and neither is lust or sloth. Envy is real, and I feel like there's a bigger thing happening there than just the sin itself. It's connected to the origins of hatred itself. Those are some of the hardest things to look at, like jealousy and hatred. You're gonna end up in places where you don't wanna go, if you really think about that and where that comes from. And it's probably gonna lead to the darkness in one's own heart, not in the thing that the hatred is directed at. So Envy's death is major. That scene is really significant for me. It stands out. These two episodes back to back are really good together. I think it does a lot in very little. And it's so amazing too, because they drop this human drama into this crazy intense, super long action sequence and it doesn't feel out of place. It feels perfect. I was thinking during the Roy freakout scene that I didn't expect this to happen. I didn't expect humans to sort of have this kind of quarreling, you know, this kind of infighting in the middle of everything they're doing, but that's perfectly reasonable because you have so many different conflicting interests and thoughts and personalities and motivations that it sort of has to come up. And the danger is not over because it'll all depend on what happens when the dust settles and who is where, who is Roy at the end and who's still alive at the end and what does the country look like? You know, there's a lot of risk. It's not like it's good versus evil. There's nuance and layers to all their characters and all their different dynamics simultaneously to the larger good and evil battle that's happening. Oh, and how could I forget, even though it was short, the glorious Armstrong sloth battle, just giving me that that sweet Armstrongness that I crave. So yeah, that's the end of episode 54. I'll see you guys next time for what I'm sure will be another amazing episode.